They arrived in their thousands, school uniforms mixed with dinosaur costumes and suits, all with the same goal, as Lily Cowan explains. We're really passionate about global warming and we want to save the world. It's the third major call to action led by the country's young people, many of whom, like Tim, were carrying signs saying there's no planet B. The world's getting wrecked by us and we need to fix it now, like before it gets un- irreversible. They follow millions marching around the world in the last week, demanding leaders act to combat climate change. Luke Weejohn is one of the organisers in Auckland. For starters, declaring a climate emergency to acknowledge and tell the truth about the urgency that this matter has. Then to transition our economy and our agricultural industry especially into a more sustainable future. Um, and emphasising on a just transition for the workers. We need our government to support an ambitious and cross-party zero carbon act. Um, We need to honour our responsibility to our Pacific neighbours. This time it's not just students who have rallied to the cause. As the movement's grown, parents, grandparents, teachers and businesses have been urged to join in. Margaret Merton turns 86 next month and says she helped make the mess. If we want to leave a world for our children and grandchildren and other people's grandchildren and children to inherit, we're going to have to put our money in our we're going to have to put our money where our mouth is and stop spending up on things that are polluting the earth. Really? And I don't think it's going to come easy to people. I I know it's not going to be easy for me, but we've just about decided we'll get an electric car because we've got old cars that pollute, you know. And um, we're going to have to give up things like overseas travel. Well, one of my friends said, no way. But I think if we want a future for these kids that isn't horrific, I read a lot of science fiction when I was younger and it was a good training for what could happen, I think. The march down Queen Street was one of 40 events held throughout the country. In Dunedin, 9,000 people marched to the Octagon, chanting for climate justice. In Christchurch, thousands more made their way to Cathedral Square. In Wellington, an estimated 30,000 people joined the march through the central city to Parliament in what the local council says could be the biggest march in living memory. Lisa Satherley missed the previous two climate marches but joined her daughter today because she feels she felt the time has come to act. I think just the momentum going all over the world, really. I'm from Norway, so next door to where Greta is from. (laughs) And um, yes, it's just the momentum growing, and I felt I needed to be part of it. Sridhar Ekambaram says he wants to show young people they are not alone in demanding faster action on climate change. They are pretty brave. They are doing what... We keep thinking we should be doing, but we are not taking it. You know, we are not taking the effort to do it, but they are doing it. So they are brave, and they should be applauded for that. The pressure continues to be put on leaders, some of whom are against the march. Earlier this week, acting Prime Minister Winston Peters said young people were better off staying in school. Another organiser, Markale Parkinson, hopes today's turnout will force leaders to take action. I hope so. I mean, if they don't, then what is democracy? For Checkpoint, Tom Furley.